All right, back in the Ace Attorney Chronicles. If you were with us last time, they, we just finished the first case. We are now entering the second, The Adventure of the Unbreakable Speckled Band. In a corner of that small, dark room, Sholmes and I waited with bated breath. In time, there came from the ventilator a hiss and a soft, almost growl-like sound. Suddenly, Sholm sprang into action, lashing furiously with his cane at a point in the darkness. You okay. see it, Wilson, he yelled, his tense voice reverberating through the air. I raised my dark lantern shutter, and the room slowly came into view. Sholmes was staring intently at one particular corner when he started whispering to me. The victim's most perplexing final words. The speckled band. I believe this is the terrible coil to which she referred, Wilson. In front of us was an enormous adder, its fangs bared as it threatened to strike. It truly was the most terrible speckled band I had ever seen. Okay. It's weird that all of a sudden this is like a Sherlock Holmes so then, mystery. What the fuck this is this? There's an anime in the middle of this. To this curious murder. Pray, do excuse me. The cabin door was bolted from the inside when the man was killed. No marks to suggest the bolt was tampered with in any way. So, this would appear to be a locked room mystery. In his final moments, the victim scrawled a message on the floor. Hmm. Almost certainly with the ink from this upset bottle. A Russian word. <gasps> so the victim was a Russian man then. And the letters are well formed, suggesting he was compass mentis at the time. Hmm, this is a most extraordinary script. And evidently not penned by the same hand as this message. But what do you In fact, I deduce it was written by someone of a different nationality. <laughs> So rabbit, thank you for the dollar. Sorry to hear that I've done that. This paper seal was placed just prior to the incident by the victim himself, I would venture. Wow, he has really got up the fucking well, machine. What have we here? <laughs> Who are you? And what do you think you're doing no, here? Da, da, no one must touch before maritime police like... come. We must wait! Shh. That ah! won't be necessary. You see. In less than five seconds from now, I will reveal the killer to you. What? <gasps> huh? D don't be absurd. This is murder. I need cabin locked from inside. Ah, yes, the lock. Blank mitten, thank you for the 20. That mystery Sholmes. is paper thin. You, you don't mean the culprit is in there? <laughs> who, who are you and where have you come from? I'm a great British consultant detective, the only one in the world. Herlock Sholmes. <laughs> I presume ah! you must have heard of me. <laughs> Whatever. Chucky, thank you for the thousand. It's me, Herlock Sholmes. Gotta dodge the copyright, do we? Is Sherlock Holmes copyrighted? I thought he was public domain by now. Something's not right here. There's trouble in the air. Ryanosuke? Again? Oh my god. Fuck me. No shot he was the guy in there. We had to drag you out of the wardrobe. Oh. Da, we found you. And now you pay, criminal. How long are you hiding in that tiny wardrobe, hmm? Uh, sorry. 
Now you have been found. It's time to admit your crime. Unless you want to find out how cold the ocean is, hmm? No. There's only one thing I'd like to know from you. Oh, god damn it. Why did you do it? Why did you take his life? I, I didn't. Wait, what did you say? Take his life? Where, where is he? Where's Kazuma? <gasps> no! 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 I'm fucking going to bed. Kazuma's dead? He can't be. We're one case in. These handcuffs. Surely you don't think I... I have to know. Why did you take Kazuma-sama's life? Answer me. I didn't. God damn. This is the worst Pride Month ever. <laughs> so we stowed away to come to England with our boyfriend. Oh my god. Did you hear what he just said? Come on. 50 days till we dock in Great Britain. Why do we need to keep it a secret from the young lady? From our faithful judicial assistant, Miki Toba, you mean. From your close friend, more to the point. Surely we could confide in her. I don't believe she'd give me away. No, but if she knew what we'd done, that would make her guilty by association. It's best that only you and I know about this. I suppose so. Okay. Well, now we know this. We we'll leave you at the next port. Stay quiet until then. Murderer. Oh, I'm not a murderer! <coughs> Duh. You said before. You said you admit everything about your crimes. And yes, I did stow away, but murder? No one else could have done it. Okay, asshole. How many times have we heard that? Susato said. Tell me what happened. I need to know. Oh god, it's a fucking investigation. He really has been killed, hasn't he? This isn't just a bad dream. And these handcuffs, they think I did it? They think I'm the killer? When they found him, the cabin was locked from the inside. What do you mean? There's no access to the cabin via a porthole window, and the bolt on the door can't be operated from outside. After the crime, the culprit couldn't have escaped these four walls. What? Or to put it another way, the culprit can only have been someone inside the cabin. Or do you have another explanation? I will think of a fucking explanation, Suzato. It's been 30 seconds. Give me some fucking time here. Woman! I missed yesterday. Have you finished the first case? Yes. Yes, 
course I'm going to deny the charge. Come on. The cause of death is still undetermined. Oh. Ship's doctor is examining the body, but he has no post-mortem analysis experience. Fuck. Can't anyone tell me what actually happened here in the cabin? I don't understand it. Why would anyone want to kill Kazuma? Presumably, that's something you know the answer to better than anyone. Shut the fuck up! Whatever you say, you were here in the cabin after all. Yes. Oh! Pizza time! Pizza time. Alright, let's turn on the pizza time song. Does Kazuma-san speak Russian? That's very interesting. I mean, it is pretty hard to believe. Here we go. You said something before about being a stowaway, didn't you? Oh, yes, we wanted to fuck in England. Where the gay sex laws are a little less... more permissible.
Kazuma invited me. He wanted us to go to England together. No, don't cut the music out here. I think you do. How could you understand? So he's gay, right? He wants his gay lover to become a good lawyer so he can change the legal system so the gay marriage is legal. That's what it is. It's crucial you become a lawyer. The laws need to change. What laws? Oh, you know the ones. literally it. God damn it, dude. Come on. California Pizza Kitchen. My new favorite frozen pizza. Oh, in fact... Chad has figured out that being gay in Japan had actually only now just become, uh, illegal. <clears throat> Don't try to go anywhere. You're the perpetrator. You can't leave. Uh, you're literally lying. Well, what do you propose to do then? Look for clues! She beat my ass. That was a Susato takedown. Let's see what I got. Oh. I actually do have evidence. Yes. When I was discovered in the wardrobe, was this piece of paper stuck over the door? Yes, it was. I remember clearly. I thought so. Kazuma always put it in place whenever I went to sleep in there. Just in case the steward or another crew member looked inside. So naturally, he did the same as well. That's... The gentleman who discovered you peeled that sign from the wardrobe doors before you opened them. 
If I were the culprit, I couldn't have climbed back inside the wardrobe and stuck this on the outside of the door as my own. Easy. Fuck off. Okay, well, we'll look around. Interesting. B and M. That's Kazuma-san's sword. He never went anywhere without it. Katana is his soul. Oh, I can already see how this is going to play out. Oh, man. Pain. The Japanese word for justice. The brush strokes are straight and true, just like Kazuma. <laughs> well, they're true, all right. is that? It's like a dark turkey leg? A roast chicken. It was tasty. Interesting. Why would she do that? You've tampered with the crime scene. Right, asshole. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
Joseph, did you hear about Twitch letting us say slurs? Anyway, that sailor is really cisgendered. Whoa, careful. That's not gonna fly on Twitter. It's Russian. Interesting. God damn it. What? Whoa! What the fuck? Who is this? No, I have no idea. I guess let's talk to him. My gaydar is going nuts! No, not remotely true. Sorry, uh, what? And now, whilst venturing towards foreign climes, you find yourself in a most troubling predicament. Oh. Well, that's true, at least. But, but how? How the deuce did I know that? What the deuce, perhaps? It was really a most elementary deduction. Hardly worth explaining. Have you perhaps managed to deduce anything else? 
But of course, a great many things. There is no mystery, my dear madam. For example, you have fled your native land of Russia, being as you are a merciless revolutionary. You leave 16 victims of assassination in your wake and now travel to England to blow up the Crystal Tower. And when the beribboned occupant of this very cabin has discovered your identity, you ended his life too. Yes. I believe that summarizes the facts beautifully. No need to hide the truth now. Nothing deceives these eyes. How do you figure it all out? That's crazy. Um, just to be clear, you're talking about me, are you? Certainly I am. Oh no. Do you see another in this cabin who fits the bill? A Russian assassin with 16 victims to his name? Well, there's the other guy who is Russian. Uh. So it's true. It was you who did this. No, dog. And you're plotting a revolution, too! It's shameful behavior, Naruhodo-san. Absolutely wicked. Oh, and I guess you think the Tsar is just fine, then! Listen, there's no way I Oh, my God. Now explain yourself! Tell me everything! This is ridiculous. How could you do it? For pity's sake, open your eyes. I'm not a Russian revolutionary, obviously. Uh... Yeah, I think so. Coder. What kind of deduction was that? You were just saying the first thing that came into your head. I gotta get good at that. Ah, but was I not right? No! Ugh. That... that part is correct. Yes, maybe. To be honest... This ship is en route to England. And I'm in handcuffs at the scene of a murder. So I'm not really sure you could call it deduction. It's more like observation. Hmm. Indeed. An observation, my dear boy, is the basis of all deduction. Shut the fuck up. My method is founded upon the observation of trifles, you see. I announce my findings with a brassy certitude. And more often than not, I'm right! Huh. I don't think you introduced yourself. Ah, my apologies. How remiss of me! I am none other than the greatest detective of the century, known to men and women the world over. Oh. My. God. <laughs> Holy shit. Whoa. I really had the, oh no, he's hot moment. Wow. I'm gonna have to fuck every single person in the Ace Attorney metaverse? Ace Attorney character designers make an unfuckable twink challenge impossible. You'd fuck Nick? Yeah? So, it's really you, the actual Herlock Sholmes. Okay. Do you know this man? The most famous detective in the world? Of course I do! There's nobody who hasn't heard of him. I guess I fucking... I'm just the dumbest man who ever lived. No, I don't think we need to. You'd fuck the butts? What a stupid fucking question. <laughs> if something smells, folks. Sup, Wova! Thank you for the 10. I appreciate it.
Fat guy streaming. Thank you for the 10. Holy shit, I'm holy. You're German? Her lock, was it? That's so funny. No, no, no. I have no hair. I mean, I have hair. Please call me Sholmes. You can read all about my exploits in this exciting London publication. Oh, yes. Ranced Magazine. Full of wonderful short stories and interest articles from Great Britain. I never miss an issue. I have it sent from England especially. Ah, yes. Here it is. The Adventures of Herlock Sholmes. Oop. 75, 65. Thank you for the 10 gifted subs. Folks, if you didn't get one, it's Dodge. Dodge, 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 Dodge. All chat. It's a follower emote. Dodge, 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 Dodge. So you're the protagonist in a series of short stories then? Indeed I am. He's a fucking YA hero. And you've read so many of your own stories, you think you are a detective. Make no mistake, I'm not the poor deluded fellow you take me for. Your inference is backward. My trusty biographer records my greatest deducting achievements and chronicles them in the magazine. You have a biographer? Doesn't everyone? Mine goes by the name of Dr. Wilson, presently keeping shop in London. Dr. Wilson? I must say, thanks to that publication, I've been fantastically busy of late. Why, at this very moment, I'm returning from Asia, having solved the mystery of a cursed royal crown. All right. Deduction, you see, is to me a science. Logical reasoning in its purest form. A science? Really? The astute observer notices even the most subtle of reactions in his subject. Thanks for the gifty to, uh, Herlock Sholmes. A furtive glance, a twitch of muscle, a slight inclination of posture, fingernails, arm sleeves, furrows in the skin. All these things are data. Right. Fat guy streaming. Thank you for another 10. And the trained logician makes deductions from his data in the blink of an eye. The ultimate conclusion is, without fail, the truth. As I demonstrated only a few short moments ago. How can he look me in the eye and claim that? So you see, I have a turn both for observation and for deduction. And vain! That is what makes me the only the one and only hair no, Herlock Sholmes. That was one answer. 15 minute response. One answer. Uh have you managed to deduce anything about this case yet? Have I managed to deduce anything, my dear fellow? Who do you suppose discovered the culprit in his most cunning hiding place? Uh, Crab Spy, thank you for the gifty to Herlock Sholmes Gaming. It was none other than the great detective before you now, Mr. Herlock Sholmes. I see. I'm in these now because of him. You could just strangle him. When I became anxious about Kazuma-sama this morning, I summoned all the crew members to force the cabin door open. And I concealed myself among their number, gaining entry to the scene of the crime. Yes, luckily for everyone, the great detective, Herlock Sholmes, was on board. And these handcuffs seem to be an excellent fit, Mr. Naruhodo. Kill. The moment I laid eyes on the scene, two facts were immediately apparent to me. Oh, really? Two facts, you say? Gimme. Okay. It's the worst deduction I've ever heard in my life. Also just completely wrong. wasn't.
God. Ever he is the dumbest man who ever lived. Not fuck him. <clears throat> okay. Can I ask you something, Mr. Sholmes? You mentioned Russia before as well. When you said it was a fearsome revolutionary fleeing from Russia. Ah, uh, yes, the train of reasoning that led me to the truth. Ah, uh, you want to run through it? I'm not, I don't speak Russian. Um, can we talk about your deduction before? The things you concluded about me, I mean. Here we have this morning's paper. The main headline reads... the dumbest man who ever lived. Yeah. Vilen Bolshevik! Vilen Bolshevik? Cool. Tell me he's not a part of this case, please. I don't look at like anything like this man! Well, you are a fearsome revolutionary, after all. Therefore, you have no doubt learned to revolutionize your appearance as well! Please. <laughs> You're playing as him! Of course he is! And might I add, your name does not appear on the passenger list. Need I say more? Well, I am breaking the law. Yeah, I'm a little confused as well. Where even is it, this Afghanistan place? You gotta ask Sergeant Ayesanosa! He's gonna know! Interesting. Look at this picture. It's a beautiful young Russian princess, do you think? I can't make any sense of it. I'm glad you've noticed. God damn it, dude. Allow me to give you a short summary of its contents. Oh, thank you. It's about the disappearance of a young lady last night. Renowned prima ballerina of the Novovich Ballet disappears from Shanghai. During a performance, the famous dancer was reported missing. She is, of course, the talented young Nikolina Pavlova. It would appear that the woman was in a costume when she was found to be missing from her dressing room. Wearing the diamond tiara you see pictured worth some 20,000 rubles. Oh. Is that a lot? The tiara is the property of the Nova Beach Ballet. It would seem the director is beside herself with worry. Yes, I'm not surprised. The company is most anxious to recover both Miss Pavlova and the valuable tiara. Okay. Interesting. For the time being, I'm done with this thing. Let's talk to Sholmes one more time. What the fuck were you just doing? It's 50 bucks. Well, 50 bucks and then money. It's Nova Vik when it's Russian like that. All right, we'll fix it.
Observe for a moment the desktop of the victim. We see that the victim was engaged in penning some text. London Diary. That's me. Kazuma was keeping notes of the trip, but... I don't think you should read his private writings. It could upset people. Tragic. And something you ought to perhaps elucidate before the act of reading. You mean you've read it already? It is my business to know what other people do not. Yes, believe it or not, I know a smattering of Japanese. Oh, all right, I see. Well, you're about to know what a Suzato takedown is. Make it happen. Aren't you going to throw the detective? I'm sorry, Naruhoda-san. What on earth do you mean? All right. This is white privilege. It would appear that the final sentence is incomplete, as if the author were cut short. Tell me, what is the nature of this writing? Pray be precise as to details. Oh, I thought you knew Japanese. A smattering, a smattering. Sayonara, banzai, mikado, nado nado. I trust you're suitably impressed. Ah. But this diary is littered with complicated looking characters of which I can receive, read precisely none. Ha 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 ha. Okay. God. So annoying. One twenty-three a.m. I can hear a faint whistling sound. Speckled band, like the snake. I love that move. It's so good. Thanks. No. Oh, right. I'm still a fucking prisoner. Dear me, you are clearly misguided. I would have no cause to say such a thing. Huh? That's very strange. I wouldn't have said you had the face of, the cr of a criminal, you know. Not really. What? Anyway, that was then and this is now. What do you mean? What I mean, sir, is this. If you're the culprit, then you must play the part more convincingly. Roll over and accept your fate. What? Oh, Jesus, what a weird-ass guy. And off he goes. What a weirdo. Can you stop doing that to me?
Okay. You wanna lay down? You wanna lay down? Do you need help? I want some attention. Up. I'm passing a kidney stone. The chew cast. Hope you had a good stream. Hmm. I feel like we've already looked at everything at this point now. Susato, can you kill that young man for us? Oh, we haven't seen this like horn device. Oh, wait, hold up. So looking up. There's nothing up here. Mm. Shit, I'm already stuck. Yeah, it's for mounting a green screen. Oh, okay. This cabin and its frame are made of metal, and they seal together perfectly. Hmm. Oh! Hello? Huh? Son of a bitch! Inspector! The man, the myth, the legend, Hosanaga. Hello again. What are you doing here? I think that should be my line. I was so stunned when I saw you, my heart stopped. We are so fucking back. Thank you for the 50 gifties. Holy guacamole. If you didn't get one, dodge in chat. It's, it's as simple as that. Day four. Give it up for day four. If there's anything I can do to help you, please ask. Well, I would I need some help right now. 
What are your special orders this time, Inspector? <clears throat> I'm so sorry. This is all my fault. I take full responsibility. For what? My orders were to act as a Sogi-san's bodyguard. It was Minister of Justice Jigoku who pushed for this overseas study tour. He entrusted me with ensuring that he would not be assassinated. I'm not sure. These are complicated times. There are tensions between the world's greatest powers. Jigoku said we should be prepared for all eventualities. We couldn't give Asogi-san a visible security escort. Which is why I'm undercover now, posing as one of the crew. And I didn't take my eyes off him the entire time we've been on board. From morning till night, every day. But I never imagined it would happen here, inside his own cabin. I failed miserably at my assignment, and Asogi-san is dead as a result. Inspector? You should have done better! <clears throat> of course not! I'm sorry. You've been deemed a risk to the ship's safety. If you move, even touch the handle of the cabin door. That stormy-looking SEAMEN there would surely snap your neck in two. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, I guess... We do have some evidence that might do it. Oh, like this. We have to do it like this. He wrote, what looks like some kind of speckled band is dangling from the ventilator grill. Speckled band? That is strange. Don't tell me. The ventilator, is it? You're very astute. That ventilator joins the next door cap. That's right. So if we could investigate in there, we might be able to work out what the speckled band is. Alright then. I can't leave this cabin at the moment. I'm stuck here until we arrive at the next port. The captain has given me strict orders to guard the scene. I'll have to entrust the investigation to you. <clears throat> I mean, his orders supersede the captain's. And I promise you that I'll lay my life on the line if that's what it takes to convince the captain. Thank you. Alright, let's go. Oh, I guess he hasn't been outside yet, huh? Kazuma-sama was being sent on the study tour by the government. That's why he was being put up in a first-class cabin. Even still, this is about twice as large as my accommodation in steerage. That must be awful. Oh, look over there. That's another crewman keeping watch. He looks enormous, and his penis is just out.
I was inside Kazuma's trunk when I first came aboard. And ever since then, I've been shut up inside a wardrobe. Must have been a very trying time for you. Please don't give me that pitying look. Alright, let's examine. What are we working with? This is something, isn't it? A huge book. A pen next to it. It's the ship's log. Yeah, let's riffle through it. Nothing. I thought he might appreciate the compliment. <laughs> anyway, last night's log is mostly blank. Presumably that means there's nothing to report. Hmm. Excuse me, but could I ask you something? No, fuck you. Okay, well, we tried. Good day, Mr. Sailor. I'm so sorry to trouble you, but could I perhaps ask something of you? You? You third-class ladies' maid? Oh my god! Rotate him. I am not Sailor. My mother gave me name. Oh, he's Russian, right? I am Senior Crewman Beef Stroganov. Ha ha ha! Okay. Uh... I'm gonna be stroking off when Danny gets here. I saw he's in the chat. I, I thought that I would make fun of him. <laughs> Boys don't know this. True! She, uh, stroking me off till I beef. We beefing till she stroking me off. Uh. Mr. Stroganoff, about this first class cabin area. Here we are in finest part of Buria Steamship. Very important persons. What sort of very important persons? Fuck you, bi- uh, government officials, kings and queens traveling in secret. Many important persons. That is why I am always guarding this place. Gosh, that's amazing. But somehow I let stupid stowaway inside. I want to pick you up and throw you in ocean. But Stroganov is not animal. Thank you. Thanks! Uh... Well... It is not permitted to visit other cabins without invitation. Okay, well, at least we know there's someone in there. What do you know about him? Can you tell us who's traveling in the cabin? His name is Mr. Grimsby Roylott. He's a very important western gentleman. Western gentleman? Do not think about it! He has nothing to do with murder of student boy. How can you be so sure about that? Mr. Roylott is authentic western gentleman. Such a man have no interest in lowly student from insignificant far east islands. Holy shit. That was harsh. When did he come aboard? That is not your business. Come to think of it. Even though we've been at sea for two weeks now and I've been in Kazuma's cabin the entire time, I've never once heard anything from next door. That is not your business. Duel Links 2 looks crazy. You lost, buddy? You in the wrong category? You and watch here all the time? Seaman Stroganoff? Hold up. I think we may have just found the next great American dish. Duh. Old time, so criminals like you cannot come in or get out. I wonder, could you tell us anything about last night at all? It is sad about student boy. Were you on watch last night as well? Of course. And did you notice anything at the time? Anything unusual? Het. <laughs> Fuck off. That was a no. Okay. 
I saw nothing unusual, nothing at all. And you didn't hear any strange noises, sense anything was wrong in some way? He's looking around. I said no! Sorry. Jesus. <clears throat> this is enough. I cannot say more now. No. It is time for me to report to Captain. You must return to Cabin. Yeah, all right. Bulkhead to second class area staying locked at all times. You escape when the lobster whistles on top of the mountain. Or as English say, when the pigs fly. Yeah, I get it. Fuck. Okay, well we bothered him enough that he left. That's what I like to hear. How is it that such a huge lump of metal doesn't just sink to the bottom of the ocean? No, that's really quite simple, Naruhodo-san. Well, consider the Japanese archipelago. The islands of Japan? Yes, they're not metal, but they are enormous lumps of earth, many, many times larger than this ship. And they don't sink, do they? They've been floating happily on the sea since the gods created them. I think they're, um... Attached to the seafloor? Okay. Guess, uh, I guess, uh, I should just go fuck myself then. Oh, they just changed it because he wasn't there. That's the way to the second class area, which we can't go to. Yeah. All right, where are we going? Wait, what is it? It's B and M. Okay, oh, what's this? What do you think this is? It's a very pleasing shape, isn't it? That's the emergency alarm. It's probably best not to touch it. An alarm. It's only in times of emergency. Oh, it sets alarm bells ringing all over the ship and brings the vessel to a complete stop. Oh, this I have to see. Okay, fucking asshole. Can you stop talking like a fucking depressed man? Chin up, Ryunosuke. No, I want to look at the cheese. A trap for catching mice. Yes, we have plenty of those back home in Japan. Although they seem to be using a lump of chalk or something as bait. That's cheese! These people didn't have cheese? Oh, fuck. Oh my god. They didn't have cow. Dog, it's 1900. Holy shit. Imagine being Japanese. You come to another nation. You find a cheese, you go, I'll try this, you eat it, and you go, I was born in the wrong nation. My entire life, a waste. That's why a lot of Asian people are lactose intolerant. Well, they've only had, what, one generation to get the fucking enzymes? That's hard. You can't eat it. The trap will snap shut on your fingers. They didn't want to eat cheese because it was stinky. Every food is stinky. Japanese food... You know what? Actually, Japanese food is actually not very stinky. Hmm. Okay. You got me. 
Okay, there is a lot of... No, there is a lot of fish. But raw fish isn't... No, it is stinky. Yep. <clears throat> I'm sorry. Cheeses. I was talking to Jillian about this, you know, the other day. Just kind of regional foods. Do you remember, like, three months ago when that one woman got shit on for writing a book about noodles while being a white person? People were like, oh, you know, you shouldn't be, like, fucking colonializing or something. We were talking about it. And really, probably one of the best cases for the benefits of, like, a melting pot of cultures in which information and uh, traditional understandings are exchanged instead of hoarded is food. Like, holy shit. All the best food in the history of time is, like, two or three different cultures, like, working on a dish together. We, I mean, we were just rattling them off, you know? The way that we conceive of, like, uh, Indian food in the West is a completely Indian and British collaboration. All good shit. Jamaican beef patties? Yes. Tex-Mex, the greatest cuisine ever conceived by man or machine. <clears throat> pizza with other shit on it? Pizza in general. Pizza is Italian plus big fucking fat Americans who like they cheese. First class cabin number one. Yes, our, that's our cabin. Americanized Chinese food kicks ass. American Chinese food may just be the greatest invention in the history of time. Spaghetti. Great stuff. Okay. Pizza was invented in the U.S., by the way. Don't let the Italians gaslight you. <laughs> I think it- I think they had a hand in it. If you went back to- to fucking... feudal Japan... with a plate of spaghetti... You could have ruled the nation within a week. It's true! If you went... back to the 1300s and met Mansa Musa with a bowl of fettuccine Alfredo, you would have been the richest man in the history of time. If you had given King George III a stuffed crust DiGiorno pizza where they stuff it all the way through the actual pizza and not just the crust at the top, he would have voluntarily given the new world to you. That thing about peasants and Doritos is true. You have- you would have an anime about you, exactly. <laughs> this is the cabin next to ours. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the ventilator cabin. Let's just get the fuck in. Go! What if he just said it was okay? Then we do the revolution like normal. Except now it has 100% acceptance from the- from the people in America. King George III had severe dietary issues based on inbreeding. DiGiorno's would actually kill him. Two birds, one stone. Alright, no one's in there. Mystery solved. Oh! Oh my god, whoa, 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 whoa! Whoa, Sherlock! <laughs> Hold up, Mr. Shelves! <clears throat> Just open it. Then how the deuce can I dispatch this muscular urge? What brake can I kick? Uh, let's just go in, asshole.
That's actually true as well, chat. If you gave any of these foods to people in the historical past, after the point of their death, their bodies would become like the most important scientific discovery of all time because we would have figured out plastic 200 years earlier from all the microplastics in it. Oh, it's the fucking guy. This guy's Russian. We heard a woman scream. A woman? Don't be absurd. As you can see, there's nobody here but me in this cabin. I guess that is true. Get out, all of you, now! His books are also fucked up, just like uh, the ones in our cabin. You're Mr. Grimsby Roylot, I believe. Yes, that's me, and you are... I am the one and only, the actual Herlock Sholmes. You've heard of me, no doubt. No. I'm a great detective among great detectives, one who adorns the covers of popular magazines, no less. So I assure you, you may trust me completely. Mm, I do not trust detectives. We uh, distinctly heard a scream emanating from within these walls. But there wouldn't be a lady concealing herself within the wardrobe this time. So why might I be so bold as to ask you to open that small traveling case? What? Don't be stupid. How could anyone fit in small trunk like that? <laughs> well, it's quite fashionable these days, is it not? Traveling inside one's trunk? Don't look at me. <gasps> oh my god, he was right? Holy shit! Leave now, otherwise I'll call this steward. That's fine. We're just gonna fucking, uh, look in his room? What do you think you're doing? Uh, yeah, good question. This is my cabin, get out! We just have a quick look. Uh, Herlock? Mr. Sholmes, what were you doing in there? I was resting, of course. Resting? Indeed, I was contemplating our sea voyage from the confines of the wardrobe whilst waiting. Waiting for the inevitable time that you would need to call my great powers of detection into service. Oh! And it would seem that the hour is upon us now. The time has come. Am I mistaken? Uh... No. Observe closely. Our Russian host in this cabin, Mr. Roylot, is clearly trying to hide something. And do you know what the most effective weapon to use against a Russian hiding a secret? Why? The truth, of course! Though it should be pointed out that such methods are not exclusively for the Russians. Right. Can you imagine how the Russian will react when the secret he guards so closely is exposed? Would you like to witness it? Yeah. Well then, what you are about to see may well astound you. For I am about to apply my great detective's greatly admired great deduction to the case. Could this man be a more hackneyed portrayal of a dubious Russian, I ask you? What? From time to time, it occurs to me... Is the fellow dubious on account of his Russianness, or Russian on account of his dubiousness? Holy guacamole. He's given our first killer a run for her money on most racist. I, I really don't think either of those things should be occurring to you, or anyone. That's right, and Mr. Sholmes. I know this man's beard and dark glasses are hard to ignore, especially on first meeting, but I once read it is a capital mistake to theorize before you have all the evidence. Never judge a book by its cover. <laughs> Shh! I must have complete silence. Hmm. 
What are you doing? Why are you peering at... Why are you peering at my face like that? Just as I thought. Yes, I have quite made up my mind now. Hmm? There can be no other explanation that accommodates all these facts. Mr. Roylet, I have reached two incontrovertible conclusions. What do you mean? Number one. Your true identity is that of a villain. Using those shears, you are about to end the existence of something most dear. Are you not? Huh! And number two. The other conclusion I have drawn. You are, at this very moment no less, in the midst of committing a most grievous crime. Beneath that beard, your mouth quivers with nervous tension as you realize you have been discovered. Does it not? Ah! Oh, Naru san I never imagined I would witness one of Mr. Sholm's great deductions with my own eyes. That was a great deduction? Nothing can deceive Mr. Sholm's. In a single glance, he can deduce all there is to know about a person. What? What an effable twaddle. Oh, yes. I've read about it countless times in The Adventures of Herlock Sholmes. And now, I've experienced the astonishing impact of his great deduction firsthand. This is like a dream come true. I can hardly believe it, but all the color has drained from Mr. Roylet's face. It looks like somehow both of Mr. Sholmes' conclusions were right. How could you? How could you? How could I possibly know such things, you wish to say? Very well, then. I shall elucidate. I shall explain how it was that I arrived at these pair of conclusions. So do I cordially and cordially invite you upon a journey of logical discovery. Let us board the train of reasoning. Put plainly, let us work through my deductions together. Oh my fucking god. So, the dubious looking Russian, Mr. Roylet, obviously what catches the eye in the first place, oh, is the enormous pair of shears in your hand. Now we ask ourselves, what could you possibly want with such an implement? The answer, of course, is staring us in the face. You were on the verge of using the shears to cut away the copious beard you sport. Huh? Now moving on. The question then begged is this. Why would you desire to rid yourself of this magnificent beard, Mr. Roylet? Once again, the answer is plain. We have clear evidence to shed light on the matter. Regard, if you will, this morning's newspaper. In particular, the fascinating front page article. Which, it would appear, you have read also, Mr. Roylet. I'm sure it needs no further clarification. The evidence that reveals your true identity is the article about the revolutionary! Oh my god, I thought we were the revolutionary. Having noted the article yourself, you decided to remove your incriminating facial hair before it gave you away. In short, your true identity is beyond doubt. You are the fearsome Russian revolutionary himself, Vilan Borshevik! Not that I've heard of you myself, you understand. Now, as for my second conclusion. You are, at this very moment, on the brink of committing a most grievous crime. And the proof of this crime? Over there. Oh yes, Mr. Roylet. Taken unawares, people have a propensity to let their eyes stray, you see. Ah! And I assure you, the eyes speak so much more eloquently and honestly than the mouth. The answer we seek lies where the furtive glance falls. The proof of your crime sits before our very eyes. Yes, the traveling case. It is time, I think, that the case be opened and its contents laid bare. No, I refuse. 
What could you possibly be concealing inside, we ask? By my estimation? A young lady, perhaps. One slight enough to fit therein. But don't be absurd! And what, pray, would be the identity of this young lady in the traveling case? Dear me. We are not well suited to a life of crime, are we? Your careless Kudel betrays you. Kudel. Kudai. Your careless Kudai? 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 Oh, God damn, it's been too long. Once again, we need only follow your furtive glance to find the answer. Yes. The reason you refuse to open your traveling case can equally be found in the pages of the newspaper. For there is another most stimulating article. If we turn from the fleeing revolutionary to the back page. Renowned prima ballerina of the Novavik Ballet disappears from Shanghai. Such a headline can lead us but to one conclusion. Your crime is that of abduction. And according to the article, the young lady's name is Nikolina Pavlova. Okay, well, I am pretty sure that at least one of those is a fucking lie. Elementsky! That wasn't one of the great deductions I've been hearing so much about, was it? Well, um, the stories are full of Mr. Sholmes's brilliant deductions, you know? Uh, but that... did seem a little different somehow. Could you come over here a moment? Well, to start with, there's the newspaper article. I think we've had this discussion before, but... These two men look nothing like each other. Ah, yes, I recall our discussion earlier. And at the time, I believe I told you... Yeah, you revolutionized his face. Yes, I'm... Yep, yep. In fairness to Mr. Sholmes, Mr. Roylet does look more like this man than you do. And another thing, the part about him abducting the ballerina... I... At first glance, the case would be appear, appear to be too small to accommodate a young woman. Not just at first glance. It is too small, clearly. You'd be lucky to fit a five-year-old in that case, even if you pushed really hard. I don't suppose the missing ballerina is a five-year-old child, is she? You mean you don't know? No, the young lady is 15. No, I didn't know. Uh, how could I? Well, if she's 15, then 10 years worth of her would be poking out of the case. Some years ago, I read something pertinent, I believe. A troop of men consuming vinegar daily in order to promote a certain litheness in their bodies. Vinegar? For such a sour bunch, it would surely be simplicity itself to comfort oneself in the confines of that small case. Oh, dear. You might be thinking of contortionists in the circus, Mr. Sholmes. Oh, this whole thing is turning into a circus. Mr. Naruhodo, something's occurred to me about Mr. Sholmes' deductions just now. I think his powers of observation are magical. His eyes cut to the heart of the matter almost instantly. It's just where he directs his attention and logic that seems a little off. Your idea of a little may be a little off itself, Miss Suzato. It's just one or two key words that seem to let him down. So I was wondering... Oh! Are we going to get to participate in these? This is this is going to be great. <sighs> Jeez, this guy rocks. My wrists. What? I felt they may hinder your ability to follow me an hour. Dance of deduction. Okay, thank you. And don't worry, I shall restore the shackles to your wrists when we are finished. I'm not worried. I'd rather stay like this. So, let us begin. Herlock Sholmes is proud to present his Logic and Reasoning Spectacular. This is my favorite guy ever. Oh my god! 
This is such a fun fucking game. Okay. So, the dubious looking Russian, Mr. Roylet, obviously what catches the eye in the first place, is the enormous pair of shears in your hand. Correct. We ask ourselves, what could you possibly want with such an implement? The answer, of course, is staring us in the face. You are on the verge of using the shears to cut away the beard you sport. Okay, so this is wrong. You can tell because there's a big question mark. Do you use shears to cut off a beard? No. Okay. Copious beard, golden locks, thick hat. I could try golden locks, I just I don't know about this. Yes! Oh! You were on the verge of using the shears to cut away the golden locks you sport. Indeed. You have identified the precise detail I was intending to expose. Such lush golden hair certainly does not befit an old man. You're not a man at all. You're a woman. And judging from the length and sheen of your hair, one still very much in her youth. Oh no. If only I had managed to cut off my hair, no one would have suspected. The question then begged is this. Why would you desire to rid yourself of these magnificent blocks? Once again, the answer is plain. Welcome, Emperor Stove Raiders, to our dance of deduction. We have clear evidence to shed a light on this path. I'm sure it needs no further clarification. The evidence that reveals your true- No, no, no! It's the other article! I had no idea that old man was really a young woman in disguise. Did you? Yes, it was a surprise. You're enjoying this, aren't you? Sorry? Your gay partner has just been killed, and here you are flirting with Mr. Sholmes! I'm just doing what we agreed. I'm not having fun or anything. This is strictly business, not strictly coming. I understand. Say no more. Well, I know what we can do. Yes! The evidence that reveals your true identity is, of course, the article about the ballerina. That's right. You've hit the nail on the head. Renowned prima ballerina of the Novavik Ballet d disappears from Shanghai. <sighs> it would appear we are finally able to address you by your true name. Yes, because your true identity is that of the, the Novavik Ballet's prima ballerina, Miss Nikolina Pavlova. Oh! Oh, oh no. Okay. It's all right. You're right. My real name is Nina. I mean, Nikolina Pavlova. But please, I beg you, don't tell anyone. Got him. Easy. This is so fucking good. Now, as for my second conclusion, you are, at this very moment, on the brink of committing a most grievous crime. And the proof of this crime, over there, Oh, yes, Miss Pavlova. Taken unawares, people have a propensity to let their eyes stray, you see. 
And I assure you, the eyes speak so much more el Okay, we heard this bit already. The answer we seek lies where the furtive glance falls. Okay, well, they didn't like that one. This woman is the ballerina, and she's right in front of our eyes, so clearly she can't be inside the traveling case. In which case, what is the crime she's committing? Do you like the idea of another chance to dance around with Mr. Sholmes? Stop it. Anyway, there must be something else here that shows what this woman is up to. Maybe the traveling case. Not the wine. Damn. I don't know. It's the only thing I see over here. Hmm. We can move the camera? How? Oh! Oh! Look at this dazzling tiara! I've never seen anything like it. Are those real diamonds, do you think? Oh, no, hodo san try it on! What, me? Isn't it usually girls who wear tiaras? Wouldn't you like to try it on? Oh, I couldn't possibly. It's far too beautiful. Why does this tiara look familiar? <clears throat> well, this for sure. Yes! The proof of your crime is surely this tiara. Ah! I believe this tiara is worn on stage by dancers in the Novavik Ballet, is it not? Indeed, it would appear to be identical to the tiara pictured here in this newspaper article. And if the reporting is to be believed, it's an item worth 20,000 rubles. In summary, the crime you have committed is theft. Oh no! Yes, you left your ballet troupe, unlawfully taking their precious tiara with you. Ow! Oh, Ow! Oh, oh. I have no one, no family, no friends. I am all alone, and I need money. But I did not steal the tiara. It was a present from, how do you say, an Earl of Prussia? It belongs to me! This girl is only 15 years old. She's run away all by herself? She must have been extremely lonely. All right, I will tell you everything. There is no point to hiding it now. Come, come, let us not be hasty. What? There remains one unsolved mystery about you. Mystery? Uh, what do you mean? You have staunchly refused to open this traveling case of yours in our presence. It is reasonable to conclude, therefore, that there exists some reason why you wish it to remain closed. Is that not so, Miss Pavlova? Um... My... My dear girl, there's no sense in playing games with me. Nothing escapes my attention. Indeed, I have a very good idea of the contents of your case even before I've ever laid eyes on them. Dear me. We are not well suited to a life of crime, are we? Your careless kudai betrays you. Once again, we need only follow your furtive glance to find the answer. Yes, the reason why you refuse to open your case is written in the books on the shelf, you stupid ass idiot. He's completely changed tack with his deduction now. Why'd he bring the bookshelf into this? It's just a wild guess, surely? It doesn't seem like that's the reason the young woman doesn't want to open her case. Yes, that's true, but still, Miss Pavlova certainly did cast her eyes in that direction. I noticed it myself. Then there has to be another reason why she won't open her case. It must be somewhere in the same area, if that's where her gaze was involuntarily drawn. I agree, that's the only answer. What she has hidden inside that case should be revealed by following her gaze in the direction of the bookcase. Hmm. 
This is close. Oh. She's got a weapon. Or I guess a cat, maybe. Yes! Yes, the reason why you refuse to open your case is written on the rules of passage. Passengers must not keep weapons or other dangerous objects in their cabins. Pets are also strictly forbidden. Inside that case of yours is something forbidden from carriage on this vessel. That is the real reason why you refuse to open it, thus revealing its contents. I... Oh... Oh my god, is it really a cat? As we've seen, the trunk wobbles from time to time, but no weapon or dangerous item would move of its own accord. Which leaves but one possibility, Miss Pavlova, inside your traveling case. The last item listed as forbidden in the vessel's rules of passage, a pet. Oh, this is the gayest game ever. I Wow, it's so good. It's so slick. Holy fuck. I love the way it looks. Oh, <laughs> elementary. God, it's good. God, it's good. Oh, it's damn good. Clearly, you aren't who you said you were. No, I am not Grimsby Roylot. My real name is Nikolina Pavlova. Everything you said was correct. You absconded during one of your ballet company's performances in order to escape your homeland. Later that same night, you stole aboard this vessel. Which couldn't have been easy. In order to obscure your true identity, you somewhat recklessly took the guise of an old gentleman. And you intended to sever all links with your past by severing your long hair. Yet to a woman, hair is no trifling matter. My personal recommendation is to leave well alone. So if it was just you about to cut off your own hair, who was it that let out the scream? But why? <clears throat> Disgust myself so no one would recognize me. As a result, you transform yourself into that questionable old man I see. I put on the fur hat and fake beard. Then, just before you came in here, I saw in the newspaper, right on the page, there was a picture of me. I was so frightened, I couldn't stop from screaming. I knew that if I didn't change my appearances completely, they would find me. Ms. Landit! Mrs. Landit, thank you for the hundo! Was planning on subbing, but someone gifted me a sub. Felt like I could donate instead. Been a sub since week nine of history. Thanks for the memories, funny card man. Thank you. Rovi, thank you for the two. Can you make the accent thicker? No. At that precise moment, we walked in through the annoyingly unlocked cabin door. Things like that happen sometimes, don't they? <laughs> Things do indeed happen like that from time to time. Are those two even talking about the same thing? There's there's just one more thing I'd like to know. What exactly Oh no, this is What exactly do you have inside your traveling case? Gimme let me see the pet! You're right. It is my dear friend inside. My only friend in the entire world world. Oh, no. Please, don't tell anyone. If the captain finds out, if you say to any of the crew, uh, we're not gonna say shit, dog. Show us the dog. Hmm. <laughs> it was something, yes. 
I'm just not entirely sure not. Or what? One more thing. Observe your wrists. Oh, god damn it. You asshole. True to my word, I have restored your shackles. <sighs> okay. <clears throat> Regrettably, chat, this is where I leave you. We're already 30 minutes over, but I wasn't going to fucking stop during the dance of seduction. This was incredible. I I can't believe how good this game is. Uh, they have... They have made investigations fun. That's just... Im I, no Phoenix Wright game has managed it yet. Tip... T-Pitch Dweller, thank you for the... You HONDO! Suck off series in the hot tub. <laughs> Alright, so we just finished the dance of deduction. And it was the gayest thing I've ever seen in my life. And I've seen gay sex. What does autoplay do? Okay. I guess that's okay. that's kind of cool. I kind of like this. Don't touch. Going down swing. Thank you for the 20. Hear me out. Ice tub stream. If we reach the 5k sub mark, we hit it by midnight. No. Ah, uh, no. Chat, we need four more hours. That's a tall order, Rin. I think perhaps it is time to call it. What the fuck? I didn't get to read any of that. Let me see. Don't, don't touch. Charlie Outlaw, thank you for the five gifties. I will tell you what I know about last tonight, but please, you must not touch my things. I, how you say, forbid it. Oh, sorry. As well you should be, young man. What vulgar manners you have. Poking around in a young lady's private belongings, neither shall I allow it. You fucking stinking ass. I don't ask. I don't want to know it. Oh, we can't touch anything for that reason. All right, I get it. They want me to talk to her. I'll talk to her. I'll talk to her. Did you know someone was killed in the cabin next door to this one last night? One of the crewmen told me this morning while I was eating breakfast. The man who died, he was a friend of mine. Oh, that's why we're trying to figure out what happened. Did you notice anything unusual last night? Perhaps you heard a strange noise, for example? Perhaps people talking? Perhaps the ship was absorbed in a wild tempest! Perhaps its steam engine exploded! Perhaps it imploded! Miss Pavlova, is there anything you can tell us? I don't know. I'm sorry, but all I could think about last night was what I had done and whether they would find me. Fat guy streaming, thank you for the 21 subs. Holy shit moly. If you didn't get one, dodge and chat as simple as that. We are just about to seven hours once again. Had to beat Sam. Sam is now in second place. More like, Sam fucking sucks. All right, chat, let me sweeten the pot. 
What do you all want? <sighs> you. Sex. Karka Wars? I'm good. Hensky, thank you for the 25! What the fuck? I didn't even offer anything. <laughs> and Icky1, thank you for the 50! Ain't no way. I didn't notice anything that was happening around me. Oh, I see. Five K and we get the Homestuck video essay. Yeah, if we get to five K, I'll do the Homestuck video essay. The problem is, I don't think people want that. I don't think it's a good get. Oh, that's it. Five K will do the Vrains essay. I got a Guido. A Guido. <clears throat> I am traveling to Great Britain, and from there I want to go to America. I will never dance again. I want to forget everything about the ballet. I will start a new life. 5k period or 5k before tonight? I don't know. You wish to forget? A challenging proposition when you have that striking tiara as a reminder. But the tiara is mine, I need it to live! I have no money of my own. The Novavik Ballet gives only a little food and water. Water. And we must dance all over the world. I had to run away. I had no choice. If I stayed, it would have killed me. Murdoch Mix. Thank you for the five gifties. We love casting spells. And the crew of this ship, they have all been so kind to me. They let me come on board. They said I could hide in this cabin. If that is indeed the truth, Miss Pavlova, it creates a most intriguing conundrum. Yes, it does. What do you think about it, Mr. Naruhoto? What conundrum? Miss Pavlova, allow me to pose you a riddle. According to this newspaper, it was only yesterday that you absconded from the ballet. Now, that being the case... It must have been last night you boarded this vessel. But the SS Burya stopped by no port last night. We got a Guido. Uh, yes, of course, right. Dyer, thank you for the gifty. Random digit, thank you for the gifty. Dyer, thank you for the gifty. Random digit, thank you for the gifty. Now that I think about it, the crewman outside the cabin acted very strangely when we mentioned that. Azure Ice Flare, thank you for the gifty. Rin, thank you for the gifty. East Nick, thank you for the gifty. Random Digit, thank you for the gifty. What the fuck? Wandering Hero, thank you for the gifty. Blasters 12, thank you for the gifty. Gadget 121, thank you for the gifty. Zodiac, Zodiac Wars, thank you for the gifty. User 2833, thank you for the gifty. Angel descended from the heavens, bringing grace and beauty to the Guido. stage. Okay. Bobo Invalid, thank you for the gifty. Lazy Fries 47, thank you for the gifty. User 2833, thank you for the gifty. Dierps, thank you for the gifty. What the fuck? Mm. I descended from the heavens because I am an angel. Uh. What? 
User2833, thank you for the additional gifty. Metal Black Tiger, thank you for the gifty. <laughs> okay, so we don't get to know about it. Is that the hard leg gay Ming? I hope you had a good stream, everybody. For those of you who are just joining us now, we are playing a little bit of the Grand Ace Attorney Chronicles. We're going to be playing this till midnight, at which point we're calling it for the night and passing it over to the night crew. If we can get to just about nine hours by the end of tonight, currently 30 minutes away, we will be able to wake up tomorrow and continue the subathon. If not, this may be the last we see of each other as it dies out pitifully during the modcast. I'm just kidding. Um, I'm sure that Siberian can make it work. I want to see the pet. It's a cat. I have no idea. First time I've heard it out of him. You two are miserable bunglers, you bungla. I don't think it's a chicken. It's not a chicken. What is it? Another banger deduction. Rin, thank you for the gifty. Phoenix Lance, thank you for the gifty. The color yellow, thank you for the sub. Normal sub. Okay, I gotta pay attention to the game. Kavaki Machias, thank you for the gifty. Angry Rob, thank you for the prime. Oh, I know what I gotta show her. Okay, that wasn't it. Roscoe 101, thank you for the gifty. Uh, Dynamic Doms, thank you for the gifty. Serenity Towns, thank you for the gifty. <laughs> well, I'd like her at least to tell me what this says. Miss Pavlova, would you take a look at this? I don't know anything. Oh, sorry. I just wanted to read it. Okay, well, fuck me, I guess. Let's try the paper seal. Okay, it's not that either. I guess we could ask her about Vyazdvorshevik. Did you know this merciless revolutionary? Phantom Thief 94, think of the gifty. Decayed corpse of Ozymandias, think of the gifty. But when I saw the picture, I couldn't believe it. He looks just like me in my disguise. Huh? The other, the other man were wearing the brown. He said so. He said we look the same. Phoenix Lands, thank you for the eight gifties. Holy shit. Yes, he says a lot of things, but I have a strong feeling that besides you and the great detective, you won't find another soul on this ocean who thinks there's any similarity at all. I gotta show her something. I guess this. Xerox the beautiful thing the sub. Miss Pavlova, about this article. You look so beautiful, like a fairy. <clears throat> I'm scared. My picture is in the newspapers. You poor girl. She's so young, just 15. For her to have run away all by herself, she must have felt very, very alone. What the fuck? I've shown her everything. Oh, we want to know about the speckled band. Let's 
Let's go, Joseph. First try. Hensky, thank you for the 10. If you didn't get one, dodge and chat. It's just that simple. Oh my god, her pet is a snake. No, I, I don't know anything. Excuse me, Mr. Roylet. Uh, oh, you're okay. That was fast. Captain would like to speak with you. You must come to Captain Quarters at once, please. All right. You must leave now. Okay, I guess we are going to get out then. Oh, we could have done this last night. We got a Guido. A Guido. I wish we hadn't been thrown out like that. She managed to find some clues to what the speckled band could be. We didn't manage to investigate at all. And I imagine we love that we won't be able to for a while longer. Wait a minute. Where's where's Holmes? Where's Sholmes? Is he in the room? Huh? Why you look like that? You want something? Uh... Maybe... You want me to throw you out again, huh? Rin, thanks for the gifty. Next time I throw you out, I show you where lobsters spend winter. Understand? No, I don't. <clears throat> well, I guess we'll just keep moving, right? Oh yeah, let's go, uh, let's go talk to Hosanaga. Phoenix Lance, 13, thank you for the 11 gifties. Wow. There he is. Oh! Shadow Wizard Money Gang. We love casting spells. Uh. How wink you, my. Thank you for the five gifties. What happened to you? Your face is. Uh, please don't worry about it. They're just scratches. When I told the captain I'd given you permission to investigate, he told me he'd pummel me with his fists and then toss me overboard. But the pummeling was over in a flash, and he decided against throwing me overboard. So it was nothing, really. Uh... Thank you? Her Lock Sholmes. Oh, God. Shall we compare notes then? Let me tell you what we found out. Oh, 
Oh, he's a ballet fan. Oh. Well, that tells us the neighboring cabin is unrelated to the case, at least. How? Because angels don't go around committing crimes, do they? Uh... Inspector, has your investigation proved fruitful? No. Um... That sucks. Oh, okay. We'll take it. The Burya's medical officer has finished an examination of the body. Oh, good. Interesting. That's very interesting. I, I thought it was going to be like the the snake got him. I guess it still could be the snake got him. The snake wrapped around him and got him. They were considering poison, but it turns out there was no poison. What weapon was used then? No weapon. Kazuma. Oh, thank you. I guess that's true. He trusts me, but that woman doesn't. The great detective. Let's talk about him. Mr. Sholmes was there, was he? Uh, yes. He seemed to be enjoying himself a little bit too much. Sholmes did a lot of, uh, how shall we say, distasteful costuming in his youth. Kazuma-sama was wearing leather shoes with a very dark tan hue. It's a little like the color of red wine, but darker. Thank you for the five gifties. Poor inspector, you look exhausted. Oh, no, well. I feel terrible. Of course, my pain is nothing compared to yours. You were his friends. I seem to have had a heavy head ever since I woke up this morning. Heavy head. That's interesting. My head's throbbing, too. Okay. Skipping through this. We already did these, right? Yeah, we already did all these. Is anything new? I guess we can take another look at this. Hmm. Yeah, that's a good question. We could ask him, but he's in that other room. Talk to this asshole. Erm. Uh, we went. Uh, Seaman Hosanaga. Hmm. That new Japanese one, huh? 
I'm racist. Okay. Okay, well, we got him out of the way. Oh, no, we didn't. Interesting. Now, time for the investigation, the part of the investigation I don't really like. Oh. Stroganov is gone. It's the fucking... It's Sherlock Sholmes. Oh, but the, the thing is open. here. Okay, first up. The clothes. Narhodasan, are you there? Sorry, I'm right here. Yes, why? Oh, good. I thought you might have climbed into the wardrobe while I wasn't looking. There's no place like home. Anyway, I'm not sure anyone could fit inside this one. It's full of outfits. Here's the door. Literally exactly the same. Unnecessary. Yes, okay. Let's... Trash, 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 dumpster diving! Oh, okay. I just kind of hoped. Oh, the saucer was for the animal to eat.
Well, only one place left to look. And we'll do the, uh... The ring-a-ding-ding -ding bell cord. Oh no, they're gonna come into this one! It's not a fucking... Oh, okay. No one here either. Interesting. Well, damn, I... I feel like I've checked everything. Hmm. Such a... You asshole! He seems to be stealing a look at something as he stings to himself. Uh, hi? Uh, excuse me? Mr. Sholmes! <laughs> Interrupting a fellow when he's singing! And just as I was about to reach the climactic finish! Sorry, I thought you were never gonna stop, so I figured now is as good a time as any. I very nearly drop you to the floor with one of my famous right hooks! Alright, I get the picture. Mr. Sholmes, what the fuck? Ah, yes. I was immersed in the study of the ship's log as penned by the stockily built crewman who's usually on guard here. Okay. Interesting. Observe the other pages and all shall become clear. But there's nothing in it. Meaning that the blankness means that there is something to report. Interesting. Was he singing my way, but the lyrics were about Sherlock Holmes? Oh, there's a gas leak.
Hmm. I also have a headache. Interesting. Did we crash into another fucking ship? The ship has come to a stop. Are you hurt? No, I'm fine. Uh... That sounds like... Close enough. Okay. The bolt? Oh... The bolt slid from the... Oh, so when the ship stops super short, it bolts the locks and the books come down. Interesting. We got a mental picture of all the shit. What the fuck? What a weird place to save. It's everywhere. What are you doing in Miss Pavlova's quarters? Ah, you both look unhurt. Good. Yes, we're fine, thank you. What on earth happened? We heard something about how we were going to collide with another ship. Yes, it appears to have been a false report, though. There's a dense fog outside. It's extremely difficult to see. Someone must have thought he saw a ship ahead. The person triggered the alarm, and that's why we made an emergency stop. Everything is chaos. Passengers screaming. Crew. This first class area is the only quiet part of the ship at the moment. I see. Someone triggered the alarm. Probably to distract us from a body. Hosanaga, were you an electrical? It's literally among Gus. You wicked intruder. Dressed in all black, you are the devil. All right. You opened my traveling case. No, no. Miss Pavlova, uh, the case was already opened. Um, yes? Arrest this man. I know he did it. Uh, did open to the case. Opening a case isn't a crime, but also I didn't do it. You st Stupid stowaway. He is a criminal. Is it not enough that he's killed a man? Okay, no. And he is stowaway as well. If Vixen promises not to steal chicken, do you believe? Couldn't have said it better myself. Take him away. He's also a homosexual. Stowing away. Trespassing. Killing. Slaying. Serving. You are devil. Doesn't look good, does it? There is cell below deck. Throw him in. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh 
my god. They're like, go. Holy shit! King? He's got his little glasses on. I'm getting better at this. Uh, what are you doing? The great detective. Inspector! I confess I've been looking for you. I have something to report to you most urgently. What is to report? Speak! An urgent report from a great detective can mean but one thing. The case of the curious murder has been solved by me. Oh? cabin door was bolted shut from the inside. No. No. It's only bolted shut because the ship stopped. Locked room. That is point. You are quite mistaken. The cabin next door is not a so-called locked room at all. Oh yes. There is another entrance. An entrance used last night by the culprit in order to gain access to the cabin despite the bolted door. Why? It's that thing. You think this is funny? I cannot even put arm through that hole. Yes. The imposter vented. Whoa. Oh my god, he thinks it's the snick snake. This is too easy. Oh. There is a distinct element of danger, but fear not, I am ready. Speckled band. A snake? Yes. Mr. Sholmes, um... The snake isn't really speckled, is it? It's kind of striped. The striped band? What? Huh? The snake is leaving a trap? Last night, your friend infiltrated the victim's cabin. Number two, the friend was responsible for the victim losing his life. No.
<laughs> yes! Another one of these gay little things. Let him cook! Let him cook! Oh, the dance of seduction. Okay, here we go. Miss Pavlova, moments ago you claimed the following. His death is nothing to do with me. The whole thing is nothing to do with me. No. Your throbbing head smarts with pain. And it is that very pain that evidences your inextricable link to the victim's death. So we ask, what was the nature of this intruder that stole into the victim's cabin on that portentous night? Why, naturally, it was the friend with which you boarded this vessel, was it not? Yes. Uh, as I suspected. Without doubt, your friend is the writhing serpent we see before us. Oh? And yet... The victim's written observations on the night in question tell of a speckled band. Whereas, regrettably... This specimen's markings do not fit that description in any way. What explanation can we give them? What was the sight that fell upon the victim's eyes that night? Don't look at me! This has nothing to do with any of this! Oh, but it does. You have the answer to this quandary even now, hidden beneath your back. You could theoretically call a tiara a speckled band. Oh. That's not it. Oh, this is a cool, this is a cool line. Okay, this is a cute line. The snake was speckled, but then molted into a stripe. That's not how snakes work, but it's interesting. Hmm. I see what he's cooking, but he's burning it. Very true. Oh, God. There's a racist element to this, too. Sholmes, I gotta stop you there. Let's not say anything we would regret later. Oh god, there's another one. The grim demise of the villain. Victim. According to the data of which I have apprised, it would appear there were no visible signs of injury. That's true. In fact, the circumstances of the victim's death can only be explained by a terrible venom. If we take that as a fact, which we don't have to, we can reasonably imagine there remains evidence to affirm it. No. Okay, that 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 hit. That was that was a hit. Your involuntarily glance betrays the hiding place you chose. Nope, we know it's empty.
Hmm. This is a no out of me. Yeah, this guy is uh, insane. But you know what they say, you can't have gay sex with one person. Herlock, you've got too few cooks in the kitchen. <clears throat> it's time to introduce another man to the equation. Could I vent churn opinion, Mr. Sholmes? But of course. What's on your mind? Uh, they're not very good. I welcome questions as to my method, and I will ask answer both loudly and proudly. He's loud, he's proud, and let's let's do a little um a little seducing. Snakes are egg laying creatures. Okay. And reptiles don't drink milk. Uh oh. I just assumed that they did. Really? I've been told that you can milk anything with tits. Alright, so this guy has no idea what he's talking about. That's interesting, though. Snake charmers really don't do anything? Don't take it out on snakes, Mr. Sholmes. There's one other thing. Don't be angry with me. The point is, even if the snake had gone through the ventilator, it couldn't have come back without help. What I'm trying to say is that you're fucking wrong. It's okay. Nothing a little gay sex can't fix. We got a Guido. A Guido! Yes! Oh, I'm so excited. Chat, say Gex! We're free. Fear not, you can't jerk off if your hands are in cuffs. Logic and reasoning spectacular two. Course correction. Hold it, Mr. Sholmes. Miss Pavlova, moments ago you claimed the following. Ah, oh god, I didn't do it, oh no. Okay. No. Law. 
That's crazy that the snake was yes. able to do that even without arms. But as we all know, that's what happened. When you recall those horrid events, the claw scratch smarts with pain. Indeed. And simple observation reveals that the wound is fresh. Miss Pavlova, did you in fact receive that scratch sometime last night? Ha! Huh. When I think about the young man who died next door, I feel so sad. When I am sad, the pain from the wound is worse. And it is that very pain that evidences your inextricable link to the victim's death. We ask, what was the nature of this intruder that stole into the victim's cabin on that portentous night? Why, naturally, it was the friend with which you boarded this vessel, was it not? As I suspected, another telltale glance. Without a doubt, your friend is the- No! It's Seaman Stroganov! Oh? It is a kitty cat! Yes! Yes! Ha 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 ha! Without a doubt, your friend is the little kitten we see before us. Yes, the scratch on the back of your hand makes that abundantly clear. <sighs> the whereabouts of this black kitten isn't clear, but what is clear is that you brought the animal with you when you ran away, didn't you? Darka is my best friend. I couldn't leave her behind. Darker would appear to be a Russian blue. And yet, that fact leaves us in a quandary. The victim's written observations on the night in question tell of a speckled band. Regrettably, this specimen's markings do not fit that description in any way. He even got to keep the same verbiage! What explanation can we give then, pray? What was the sight of that fell upon the victim's eyes last night? Don't look at me! This has nothing to do with any of this! No, that's clearly not what it is. We got a Guido. A Guido. Oh, it's like a whip or something. Well, it's speckled, it's a band, but what is it? It's a cat's toy. Hmm. <clears throat> okay. Yes! Yes! The thing you are trying but failing to conceal is a cat's toy. Precisely, and the true nature of the now infamous speckled band. And it was this toy that you dangled through the ventilator. You waved it around, I presume. The victim could not fail to notice it. Why? For what reason? My dear boy, there can only be one answer to that. After her feline friend disappeared through the ventilator into the neighboring cabin, Pavlova attempted to use the speckled cat's toy to incite the creature to return. Ah. Got her. We'll take the cat. She scratched the back of my hand, ran up the bell cord, and disappeared through the ventilator. She is so naughty. A beloved kitten. 
Well, now we have a second problem. Moving on, we come to the heart of the matter. How did this young man lose his life, and why? Okay. No. But we actually have... This. The circumstances of the victim's death can only be explained by the post-mortem report. In fact, the circumstances of the victim's death can only be explained by the post-mortem report. I knew it was one or the other. <laughs> you're, you're great. His neck was... Indeed. The breaking of the cervical vertebrae is fatal. Only that Goliath would be strong enough to survive that. Sermon Stroganov isn't an immortal freak, you know. The jury is out. Anyway, we have on good authority that the victim's neck was broken. Now, if we take that as fact, we can reasonably imagine there remains evidence to affirm it at the scene of the crime. No, I don't think so. That's just an awfully, awfully unlucky one. Thing from the scene? Well, certainly this. Yes! Slipped and fell on a glass? Oh, it's the cat's bell! It's shoe polish. And the color of the polish is a perfect match for the color of Mr. Asogi's laced leather shoes. Looking at this mark, it's not hard to imagine what happened. For some reason, Mr. Asogi caught his foot at that point on the floor and tripped. Please, no. And by a dreadful turn of misfortune, he caught his neck against an immovable object as he fell to the floor. Suffering a fatal blow to the spine, the victim's vertebrae shattered, and in that instance, he lost his life. Human bodies are so fucking crazy. They are so fragile. They don't like it. I don't know anything about this. Is that true, Miss Pavlova? What about the evidence left at the scene where Mr. Asogi lost his life? But now your involuntary glance betrays the hiding place. Nope. Not. No, no. No, no, no. That's the tiara, but I don't think it was the tiara. <sighs> I mean, we'll take a look at the tiara. Right, you hid the evidence that links you to the victim's death in the waste paper basket. Here we have a fragment of some intricate glass object, it would seem. One that has a familiar air, in fact. Precisely, we found another piece of broken glass in the floor in Mr. Sogi's cabin. And as you can see, the two pieces fit together perfectly. So, Miss Pavlova, shall we consider what this tells us? Why would it be that part of a glass object evidently broken at the scene of the victim's death should be found in the waste paper basket in your cabin. You're well acquainted with this glass bell, are you not? I don't... I don't know. 
because we have evidence. Take it away, Mr. Naruhodo. I do have it. Excellent. Yes. Team me up. I'll knock him down, Mr. Sholmes. The truth is caught up with you, Miss Pavlova. The young man who lost his life last night did so after a truly inauspicious fall. And the cause of that fateful stumble? <laughs> Your absent feline friend, Darka. <laughs> well, we're not going to put the cat in prison. Elementary! <laughs> what a fun fucking mechanic. Oh my god. There's a little... <sighs> There's still a couple things that are wrong about this. The whistling was her. Like, where did the snake come from? What's up with that escaped uh, Russian? Why does everyone have headaches? did see that we don't know where the cat is either. Oh. I didn't say. Uh, Snake is my friend. His name is Pirosco. Huh? Uh, he escaped from cage when emergency alarm sound. I was looking for, for him. Did not expect to find him in here. We are at sea for one year. You want to be so long without close friend without someone who understand. A venomous snake? Uh, no venom. Uh, Pirosco does not have uh, venom. He is harmless, very long, but very gentle. He is adorable, like Granny. Uh, it's venomless? Uh, yes. Now he hungry, so he in bad mood. But once I feed him, you see big smile. You feed him what? Prosco eats mouses! Big, fat, round mouses! Of course. How else can I catch my friend's favorite food? Okay. How the deuce did something so inept land a starring role? It's not my fault, I do not make up stories. 
My pirosko has nothing to do with incident. Okay. But why do we all have headaches? Hold up. I'm no great detective like Mr. Shawn's. I don't have a gift for knowing the truth. But even I can see, that was not the truth. Don't you agree, Mr. Naruhodo? Uh, it kind of works for me. Here's a discrepancy, I just can't put my finger on it. It's the conundrum. I'm only present here for a very specific reason. The truth is, you, Mr. Naruhodo, are simply a distraction. I do hope you've been not finding your shackles too uncomfortable. God damn it. Especially as they're on your wrists as a result of my intervention. I was hoping I could resolve matters before we made our next port call. I overlooked one important detail. was. The victim who lost his life in the cabin that was bolted shut from the inside. The man tripped over the kitten that had climbed into the cabin via the, via the ventilator. Tragic, yes, but still an accident. accident. Wait, let's just take a step back. It doesn't make sense if that's really what happened, does it? He would have died instantly. I've got the evidence to prove it. Oh, whoa, oh my god, we have lifelines again! Yes! The truth is clearly recorded in this photographic print. There's no way Mr. Asogi could have left this message on the floor. The script is Russian. The word means wardrobe. I see what you mean. Most people would leave a dying message in their native language, Japanese in this case. And maybe he was studying Russian. It is a simple language. You could have picked it up very fast. Doesn't seem likely. That's not the point. It doesn't make difference if he knew Russian or not. What do you mean? There's no way he could have left the message on the floor. The reason why is explained in here. Damage to the cervical vertebrae resulting in instant death. Which means after the victim fell to the floor, he couldn't have written something. He was dead. <clears throat> That's not the only reason either. This one's hard.
there's a big flaw, a fatal flaw. If that's what happened, why do we have half of it? Remember what we found the other half of the glass bell in that waste paper basket. Would you care to explain that, Miss Pavlova? Oh no. Both these pieces of evidence point to the same conclusion. When Mr. Asogi died last night in his cabin, there was someone else in the room. And that same person arranged the scene to disguise the truth in order to cover up his or her own guilt. There was someone else present in Mr. You are wasting time. Someone else was there. Da, of course we know this. Bulkhead was bolted shut from inside. There was no way in or out. And only other person in cabin when young yes. students died was you. Yes. It's true. I was in the cabin when it happened. You were shut inside the cabin wardrobe to be precise about the details. But I don't know Russian. I could not have left the message. Not would have. There's no way you could have... Oh, okay. All right. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Forgive me, my gay lover. As I was saying. In an attempt to incriminate me for the crime, even though I had been asleep the entire time. And then, the same person picked up the broken glass bell that had fallen to the floor for fear of it becoming evidence that would show how he died. But why wouldn't they take, have taken all the pieces away? Leaving half would always raise questions. Um... It was past one o'clock. The cabin would have been dark. Hold it! Hold it! Nina is woman of sea. She is daughter of strong sailor. Two years ago, they noticed her dancing skills, but before, she was dancer on this ship, a member of ship's band. You do not accuse Ship's Angel of being criminal. So that's it. You are a great detective, you should know. Look truth in eyes. Cabin was bolted. Nobody go in cabin. He's not, he's not right. Oh, come on. I put it to you that I could bolt this cabin door without laying a finger on it. Oh. Well, Mr. Naruhodo, I believe you know what I mean, don't you? In fact, I do. We've seen it happen. Indeed, we have. Point out the telltale signs. This. Yes. Look at the bookcase. See how the books and things have toppled over during the emergency stop. Yes, it's a powerful vessel after all. Any small objects that aren't fastened down are bound to fall over. I believe it's inertia. Well, whatever it's called, it's the force that I pushed over the books on the bookcase. It made something else in this cabin move. The bolt on the cabin door. She looks so insanely cute when she's, like, doing that. That looks like... Oh, yes! That's it! When the ship stopped suddenly, the bolt flew across and locked the door. Yes, it's made of metal, but it's small and light enough to be moved by the ship's sudden change of speed. The force of ineptia, if you want to call it that. Got him.
Do you have anything to say about this, Miss Pavlova? Are you out of mind? You say Borja made emergency stop? Oh, it's simple enough. Are you forgetting the button in the passageway outside used to trigger the emergency alarm? Of course, there was a notice. Press it in times of emergency. On dark nights, when the fog is dense, the captain cannot afford to rely on the eyes of his lookout alone, hence the placement of a number of buttons to allow any crewman to raise the alarm. The sort of button one is almost compelled to press to satisfy one's curiosity. Mm, wait, I it was you? I'm passing a kid. Uh, when the button is pressed, two things happen in the interest of safety. Chloe! Thank you for the raid. The emergency alarm bell rings and the vessel comes to a complete stop. As indeed it did a little earlier today. Sholmes, were you fucking around? Are you kidding me? As I always say, a button has but one purpose in life. To be pressed! Whatever the occasion. How dare you mess with ship! I report you to captain, you are in much trouble now. Now, now, I'm sure all that can wait until later. Let us not overlook the fact that we've now learned a valuable lesson. When the vessel makes an emergency stop, the bolts on the cabin door slide close. So what we must now consider... Did this ship make an emergency stop, or did it not? You are idiots! Borja is a huge ship with many passengers. If we make emergency stop even in the middle of night, there would be chaos everywhere. What are your thoughts, Mr. Narahodo? Well, it's possible. What the fuck evidence do we have? Seaman Stroganov. It's your duty to patrol the first class area of the ship, isn't that right? Da! That is correct. And the ship's log here. This would be where you record the details of your duties. What are you doing with that? That is mine! You rather carelessly left it atop the little makeshift bureau in the passageway out there. But as a responsible passenger, we took it into our care with a mind to return it to you later. I left it there on purpose! That is where I put it always! The point is, looking at what you usually record, it's clear that under normal circumstances you write the phrase nothing to report every 30 minutes. But from 2 until first light, nothing was recorded at all. Uh, that is... The da, because nothing happened. But if nothing happened, you would write nothing to report, wouldn't you? <laughs> Indeed so. Which tells us that shortly after 2 a.m., something happened aboard the SS Burya. Something sufficiently significant to make you forget to fill in the ship's log, in fact. Are you suggesting that the ship really did make an emergency stop in the middle of the night? Stop talking rubbish! Candyman! Thank you for the 40! And we are dangerously close to making it to first morning light tomorrow, 45 minutes away. If I'm perfectly honest, I find that a little hard to believe myself. Oh, why? Well, because if something as major as an emergency stop really had happened, surely we would have noticed. That's very true. Thanks to the emergency stop we experienced earlier, we all know what it feels like. The ship lurched so violently and the alarm bell was so loud. I can't imagine anyone would sleep through that, even if it happened in the dead of night. Well, no, that's a good point. What of... The throbbing. Oh, we're throbbing. Your head, man. Throbbing of your head since this morning. We have all suffered with it. Oh, yes, I have had a headache. You're right. In fact, I haven't been feeling myself since I woke up today. Nor have I. My head has been feeling heavy ever since dawn. Zara! Hope you had a good stream. Yes, you've all been afflicted, haven't you? Just as I suspected. He's right. My head's been throbbing today, too. Since dinner, everything has felt sort of hazy. Then the first thing I noticed this morning was this pain in my head. I'd been dragged out of the wardrobe. 
The handcuffs are put on me. Why didn't I wake up while that was happening to me? Tell me, Mr. Naruhodo. You boarded this vessel as a stowaway, didn't you? Uh, yes. The stowaway class of accommodation doesn't include meals. What did you survive on? Well, Kazuma looked after me. He was happy to share his meals. So you enjoyed some of the whole roast chicken dish that was served yesterday evening, I take it? In fact, I had all of it. Kazuma wasn't fond of chicken. Oh, really? So the victim didn't eat any of the chicken at all. That's right, he didn't touch it. My dear fellow, does that not strike you? Shucky, 1833, thank you for the thousand bits. Mr. Sholmes, do you mean to say that there was something wrong with the chicken? I do. Really? The meal prepared for the passengers last night had been tampered with. Tampered with by the addition of a soporific designed to induce a very deep slumber into those who had consumed it. A sleeping drug? Do you mean... Whoever did this laced every meal with a sleeping drug so no one would notice the ship's emergency stop? Mr. Naruhodo, of course that's not what Mr. Sholmes means. What a far-fetched idea. That is precisely what I mean. I am a fucking insane person. Lacing every meal of every passenger on board with a soporific would be impossible. Unless every single member of the crew was a conspirator. Well, Seaman. Eh? Oh? Was he cooking? This is the first time Sholmes has been cooking! Yeah? I cannot make problems like this for everyone anymore. These crewmen are your former comrades, I believe. Yes. So when I decided to run away, I asked them to help me. We agreed to help everyone together. She threw away everything, her fame in ballet, Madarasha. We wanted to help our angel. I don't believe it. You are right. We put sleeping drug in chicken. We could not make all drug, uh, how you say, dissolve. Ugh. At midnight in waters near Shanghai, we brought our angel on board. She was helped by a comrade on shore with f small fishing boat. All the passengers of the SS Burya slept soundly, thanks to the most magical effects of the slumber-inducing potion their meals had contained. So if that's what happened, the only people awake, the crew, people who dislike chicken, and the newly boarded passenger. But why did she kill him? Yep. You have talked long time and said many things. What is point? The point is what I said earlier. There was somebody else present on the scene when the victim lost his life last night. Someone who left a message in Russian on the floor in an attempt to incriminate another. Someone who tried desperately to hide the broken fragments of glass that would reveal the culprit's identity. And someone who abused the ship's emergency stop procedure in order to lock a door. A busy night. But, but... Uh, I, I don't know about any of this. You like to speak with long English words and explain clever ideas. But I am sailor, and sailors don't listen to long, boring stories. We don't believe. Sailors trust what we see with our eyes. A laudable trait. What? I am of the same disposition, my good man. Observation to me is everything. No, he is not. Mr. Naruhodo. Do you hear it? The accusatory cry of guilt on the wind? 
more. Proof of involvement, man. But you can't hear such a call with your ears. You must hear it with your eyes. What are you talking about? I believe the time has come. For one... Boy, oh boy. <sighs> Chat. Say, Gex! What suggests someone else was there at the scene? Oh. Seaman Stroganoff, you seem to have quite a large purple stain on the back of your uniform there. Uh, yes, I uh, don't know where dirt comes from. Nothing in particular comes to mind. Uh, what are you trying to say? It would appear the significance of the stain has es escaped your attention, Seaman. Allow us to make it plain. Cause the purple stain. Uh, it's the ink. I guess this probably works. Yes. The ink it shows. That's what caused the stain on your uniform. Ink. A rather unusual color of ink. Purple. Ah, the penny drops at last. Now you see the significance. The Russian word on the floor next to the victim's body was written in purple ink. And the stain on the back of your uniform is ink of exactly the same color. If the ink had been dry, it couldn't possibly have stained your uniform in that way. Which means... You must have been present at the cabin in the moments immediately after the ink was spilt. Alright, yes. It was me. I did it. Everything. I arrange everything in dead student's cabin to make it look like wardrobe bandit. I press button to make Borgia do emergency stop. We bolt the cabin shut. I did everything so no one would suspect our angel. Don't worry, angel. Let me do talking. It was after one in morning. I was on duty, duty patrolling passageway. Angel came to me. She was white like sheet. White like streamer. Beef, please, you must help me. I went with her. The door to cabin number one was open. When I look inside, I see student body on the floor. What happened here? Please don't tell anyone. My little one, my little furry friend. Everything that happened in cabin is like Angel told you. Kitten escaped through ventilator into Mr. Asogi's cabin. He tripped over it and broke his neck. That is right. So after the incident, when the cat ran away, Miss Pavlova visited the cabin next to hers, only to find its occupant lying lifeless on the floor. She said she was worried when she heard the sound of something falling. That's when she went to look. The door was not locked. She opened to look, and you already know what happened after. There's just one thing, if you wouldn't mind. What? When you went to Mr. Asogi's cabin, Miss Pavlova... Was he already dead? Why? I already told you! When Nina opened the door and... Well? That's a no. Oh yes, that is right, I saw him. He was on the floor, not moving, I was scared. I understand, and I believe you. What? It's 
Something very nearly slipped to my mind. Jesus Christ, I don't know. It all looks pretty good to me. I guess his neck isn't yes. broke. No. My first life loss. It's not the word. Imagine losing footing. Oh. I mean, the hand, I suppose. Yes. Oh my god, it's the same one. I'm getting owned on the fucking last bit of this. The, the weird part of this is they could have just put the fist in a fist. You open palms flat, but it's palled into a fist. You might say as though he were gripping or something. Oh. Interesting. The final clue. What does this crescent moon mean? Find the answer with your own eyes. Shadow Wizard Money Gang. Flexing my muscles 24-7. 420, thank you for the 50 gifties. We have made it to tomorrow and out of this game. She has such petite ears, but what's this? A crescent moon earring. Yes! Miss Pavlova, on your ear there. I see you have a crescent moon as well. And on your other ear, none. Now, the missing crescent moon was found in the victim's clenched fist. There's one logical conclusion. Wouldn't you agree, Mr. Narahodo? Yes. Miss Pavlova, Mr. Osogi must have grasped that crescent moon and pulled it from your ear moments before he fell to the floor. In other words, Last night in Mr. Sogi's cabin, you witnessed the moment where he fell with your own eyes. You were at arm's length from him. But then the question is, why did he do that? Why did he pull your earring from your ear and hold it in your fist, his fist in his final moments? Angel. No one can protect you now. Tell us the truth. Last night, what did you do to Kazuma?
When I think about everything that happened yesterday, it was too much. Running away, the fishing boat, trying to climb onto the ship. And then... I couldn't believe it when she disappeared through the, the ventilator. I tried to call her with a whistle. I tried waving her favorite toy. But nothing worked. Darko would not come back. I'm sorry. I thought it was a friend of mine. The young man from your country. He was very polite and kind. He helped me to find Darka, and he promised not to tell anyone. But then, when I had my friend in my arms again and was going to leave the cabin... Sorry, but... Oh, yes? I'm sure I know your face. I've seen you somewhere before. Ah! Of course! You're Nikolina Pavlova, aren't you? The Russian ballerina? No! I don't know that name! My heart nearly stopped when he said it. He knew who I was. How could this... a man from a land in the faraway east know a Russian ballerina? Yes, I saw your performance in Japan. The beauty of the ballet made a deep impression on me. But what are you doing on this ship? I'm sure I read your ballet company was performing in Shanghai. I can't fool him. I have to tell him the truth and hope he doesn't tell anyone. Hmm, I see. So you've run away. Give me a moment. I could use another opinion here. I drag young man's body to good place and use ink spilling to write on floor. Out of the wardrobe, so people who found him would look inside and find stowaway. And tell me, what of the glass bell? It was by my feet, so I picked it up. I see. But it was dark in the cabin, I didn't notice the other half. Then Angel went back to cabin, and I finished job. Aren't you friends with everyone on the crew? Why would that have been a problem? It was what he said first. Inspector. Oh. He sp said an inspector was his friend. 
thought if police knew about me, they would arrest me. So before he could pull the bell cord, I... I guess... No... We're just gonna make her feel bad. What action was he about to take at that moment? Yeah. I... I know this already. I'm ready. Get a second opinion from me. Pavlova, think back carefully. What were Mr. Asogi's exact words last night? Give me a moment. I could use another opinion here. Another opinion. Not from a member of the crew. From <laughs> his close friend. That's the end of the fucking... Jesus Christ! Oh... Okay, alright. What will happen to Miss Pavlova now, then? Once we re reach Great Britain, she'll be handed over to the British police at Scotland Yard. About the fact that she ran away from Russia. Won't the Russians try to repatriate her? Apparently the English detective can speak to the immigration office and sort it out. Sholmes? He has power? No, I don't think so. She's an exile. I'm sorry. I wanted to help our angel, no matter what. I didn't think about you, about how you lost a good friend. I will go with Nina. I will give myself to British police. That's kind of you. In the meantime, thank you for letting me go free again. Kazuma's death feels like such a waste, but... Well, do what you can for Miss Pavlova. Duh. 
Well, I'm afraid you need to pack now. We're due to arrive in Hong Kong tomorrow. As much as it pains me, I'm going to have to hand you over to the consul to arrange your passage back to Japan. Right. Yeah, we fucking... Right. So. That is not funny. <laughs> what what is the meaning of this? Oh, a trifling matter. In my head, I shall always picture you wearing those shackles. Without them, the balance seems all wrong. It's distracting. Sorry. So I decided to restore them for old times' sake. You are a stowaway after all. <laughs> he thinks this is funny. Mr. Sholmes, fuck you. Can you please be normal? The loss of your companion is truly heartrending. I hope that you will be able to fulfill some of his aspirations in his honor. Well, I'm going back to Japan, so no. That won't be possible. We shall be disembarking at the next port in Hong Kong. We have to return to Japan and make a full report about everything that's happened. Wait a minute. It's just me that has to go back, isn't it? I was the stowaway. The terms of the study tour were negotiated by the Department of Justice in Great Britain and Japan. One lawyer and one assistant. In the light of Mr. Asogi's unfortunate death, the study tour can no longer go ahead. My dear fellows, the majority of problems have an extremely simple solution, you know. All you require is one lawyer. But there is no one with the qualifications, Mr. Sholmes. We know of no other lawyer. Qualifications? Any qualifications obtained in your own country will be of little value in Great Britain, I'm afraid. Oh, but, but anyway, the voyage to London still promises a good month of time. Ample opportunity to find yourself another suitable lawyer. Yes. Um, Miss Suzato? Do you think perhaps I might be able to do it? But you're not a lawyer, Mr. Naruhodo. Oh, unless... Are you studying law? N no, I'm not, but... I'm sorry, there's not even a chance it could work. As I said, there is more than a month before we reach England's shores. Isn't that right, Mr. Naruhodo? Uh, yes, I have a month in which to study. Oh my fucking god, he's gonna pass the bar in a month. That's ridiculous. Are you seriously suggesting anybody can learn all that in just 40 days? There's only one way to find out! Woo! The very first man cramming. Why put yourself in such a difficult position for Kazuma? He said there was something he had to do in Great Britain. He would sacrifice anything to make it happen. He was passionate. He can't let all that passion just come to nothing.
I mean, this is the stupidest idea ever, but of course. It is a little fascinating. <laughs> I like Sholmes. I One case and I'm in on Sholmes. Sholmes. This is the dumbest idea, but it is an idea. Yes. is Karuma. It's a great sword that's been in the Asogi clan for generations. Very well. I accept. His sword is his soul. <laughs> Alright, let's get cramming. to make up for the uh, Suzato takedowns. The Suzato Takedown. How beguiling. Oh, okay. Oh, she's gonna throw Sholmes! He's- she's throwing me again! That was a Suzato squash! Karuma. That's right, it's a prized sword that's been passed down through generations of the Asogi clan. I believe you get, got permission to bring it with you. A Japanese man's sword is his soul, Ryanosuke. I can't be parted from my katana. Karuma guides me. I truly believe that. <laughs> so its name compels its wielder to slice evil in two? Not that you would need much compelling. On that subject. Something very important uh, I need to do when I get to Great Britain, and I'll sacrifice anything to make it happen. I'm gonna learn what it is? No. That important thing he had to do. I still don't know what it was. I'm going to see the place for myself and work it out. In London. What an insane fucking chapter. We're up way past our bedtime. 
Wow. <sighs> Holy shit. What an, what an incredible fucking case. God, what a banger. Episode f three, The Adventure of the Runaway Room.